Welcome back everyone. Every once in a while I get to make a budget phone compilation video and, and this happens to be another one which I'm so happy to do. Now I want to talk about the best budget Android phones of 2020 but they're mostly going to be in the used market. Some of them I'm sure you can still buy brand new but usually when people think of the budget lineup they usually think of like the Galaxy A series devices or Xiaomi some Xiaomi phones or LG's newer cheaper phone lineup. I think there's a lot of merit in that, but I also think getting the used versions of older phones that came out are probably one of my favorite things to do, and you get the best bang for your buck in those departments, in my opinion, over getting a brand new budget phone, in my opinion. So these are all pretty much going to be used. I'm going to be looking at the used prices. All these phones will be linked down below, so you can get them from there on Amazon and help support the channel at the same time. Now, starting off, the very first phone I want to hit on is the Google Pixel 3a. This is probably one of the most hyped up budget phones of last year and it's only gotten cheaper since then now unfortunately google now unfortunately google actually went and stopped selling these things which is okay things happen but this phone i mean for what it brought it's i mean it brought a amoled display which was super nice a couple gigs of ram which is cool soft updates for a while and it doesn't even feel that cheap of a phone i mean it feels pretty good definitely isn't a cheap phone yeah when you're feeling it maybe it doesn't feel like the most premium thing that i think about it but it's a very good phone the camera is very very good for the most part you have that fingerprint sensor on the back of you know a little bit of bezel on the front but still a pretty good looking phone overall when i messed with it last year i was super happy about it and even when i mess with it now it's still a very good phone and you can find them for like less than 200 bucks if you really look hard enough i'm sure on ebay you can get them for less than 200 on amazon prices are a little bit more usually but they're usually in better quality and all that so that is my very first phone would probably be the Pixel 3a and that's probably one of the cheaper ones on my list to be honest. Now the next one is a little bit more expensive but still compared to a lot of the thousand dollar phones plus that we have in the market right now. This is definitely one of my favorite ones that I talk about a lot and that's the Samsung Galaxy S10. This is a tremendous phone. It's still talked about every time I talk about this device like so many people you know more often than not view that video because it's a tremendous phone and that shows to me that a lot of people care about the Samsung Galaxy Galaxy S10e. Now it's definitely not perfect, but for the amount that is depreciated too, I mean, you can find these things for less than $300 if you look hard enough. Definitely, you know, less than $350. And it might seem like a lot of money, but it's actually pretty cheap when it comes down to it, especially it was over like $700 last year, I think. The screen is great, you know, even though it's 1080p, it still looks great. You have that Infinity O display or whatever it's called. On top of that, it feels like a thousand dollar phone still. You have glass on the back. You have reverse wireless charging, which is impressive. You have a micro SD card slot, which is so cool. And like I said before, it looks and feels like a tremendous device. Is it the best looking thing? Probably. Actually, I think it looks pretty good. I mean, there's, you know, very little bezel on it. It got one UI 2. It's getting another version of Android as well. And for the most part, you know, it's a pretty good phone for the, for everything you're going to throw at it. The cameras are great on it. USB-C, don't forget about that. And I think for a majority of people out there, the Samsung Galaxy S10e, you can buy this phone and feel like you still have a very, very premium flagship and not necessarily feel like you have to go switch or anything like that because it's still a tremendous phone. So for sure, the Samsung Galaxy S10e is one of my favorite phones out there. The next one is the OnePlus 7 Pro. Now, this is definitely a little bit more expensive than those ones you'd think, but I think these ones, you can still find them for less than $300. I found a lot of these on eBay for like less than $300 and something, $320. And that's actually very, very weird because, well, first of all, it wasn't really too expensive when it came out last year, but considering what you're getting and how big of a phone this is and just how many features are packed into it, on top of that, on the software that it's on, it's a very impressive thing that OnePlus was able to do with this device. It's definitely not perfect. It has a lot of weird things going with it, but it's still one of my favorite devices. You have that pop-up camera. You have very, you know, just like almost no bezel on this phone, no camera hold, but you do have that pop-up camera, like I stated. You have USB types see you have a very very minimalistic software on it the software is tremendous and definitely one of my highlighted features on this thing the cameras aren't the greatest but they definitely get the job done like if you're in a pinch and you need to use it i mean go for it it's not i'm not gonna stop anybody but performance on this thing is still great anytime i did anything with it it was top tier and i just compared it to my oneplus 8 and oneplus 8 pro and even though those phones were faster and everything the oneplus 7 pro still held its own and it still felt like a very very premium phone so for sure the OnePlus 7 Pro is one of my favorite phones out there and especially for the price tag that you can get it right now in the used market. It definitely has my thumbs up for sure. The next one is one that is kind of like a predecessor of the other one that I just labeled here 
and that was just the Google Pixel 3. Now, the 3 I talked about earlier, but the Pixel 3, I think, you know, is probably one of my favorite phones as well. Anytime I do anything with this device, anytime I pick it up, it has my full seal of approval. People might just assume that the 3A might be the better one just because it came out newer and all that, but I actually like the 3. I think it has a lot more going for it. The cameras, they say, are the same, but I always found the Pixel 3 to have a really good camera, even maybe better than the 3A. It might be a placebo effect, I don't know. You still have, you know, a little bit of bezel on it, but it's a healthy amount of bezel. You know, with phones like nowadays, I mean, they're removing all of it, which is good too, but this one has a good balance. It's definitely not super thick and it's definitely not, you know, super small. So it's definitely like in that middle ground, which I do like, you know. It has USB-C and it feels pretty good in the hands, even though it's made out of whatever it is, polycarbonate or whatever it is, I don't know. It still feels pretty good. It has a good half to it as well. The screen looks great and performance is top tier as well. This thing's still getting, I think, another version of Android, maybe even another one, who knows. But because this thing is a stock Google phone, you can easily go custom ROM it or do whatever you want to as well. The development community behind these phones is tremendous. So you can go do whatever you want to with it, which is really cool. And right now it's on Android 11, which is really awesome as well. So it's got Android 10 right now. It's getting Android 11 officially very soon. And then it's going to get Android 12, which is going to be super impressive. So this thing's going to stop at Android 12, which I'm really happy about. So this thing's going to last you for a very, very long time. So that one was the Google Pixel 3. Now the next one is kind of a predecessor as the one I said before also. And this one is the OnePlus 6T. And I talked about this phone last year. I talked about it again this year. And I like this phone a lot. And I picked a mine up for I think like $210 to $220. I forgot how much we paid for it. But the fact that you can get a phone of this quality, of this caliber for that cheap of a price is a very, very impressive thing. And you know, one thing you get to see about these phones after a certain amount of time is to see the problems that these phones had. And with the OnePlus 6T, there were a couple issues here and there, but for the most part, it was a very, very good performing phone. It had a lot going for it. Even though it wasn't perfect, I would still give it a thumbs up. The cameras were okay, you know, I would say better than not. You have USB Type-C, you have a great screen for the most part, even though it's 1080p, it's still a very good 1080p display. And the performance was still top tier as well, for the most part. I was definitely not perfect. There were some quirky things here and there. But for the most part, really anything I did with it, it handled it for the most part. And I would definitely say it had my seal of approval as well. It's a very good performing phone. The battery life is very good on the OnePlus 60, as well as every other phone that I listed here for the most part. So that phone as well is a very, very good performing phone in my opinion. Now this last one, you know... There was really no hierarchy in this list. I don't think the last one is the best one or anything, but the Samsung Galaxy Note 9, I think, is another phone that should be on this list for the amount of value that you're getting from this phone and the amount of depreciation that this phone saw, I think is pretty impressive for the most part because it's a, like completely performing. I mean, it performs so good. On One UI 2, this phone, even though Android 10 wasn't a huge update, it definitely brought a couple of new features for the most part, which is super cool. This thing brought those gestures, which is so cool. And on the Galaxy Note 9 on One UI 2, I think it's such a cool mixture. And I think for anybody out there who's in the middle or whether they don't know whether they want to spend the money or don't, getting a Note 9, I think, is a very good mixture of value, performance, and just features in, in general. Now, you still have USB-C. I don't even know why I say USB-C as if it's some type of feature, but you get the great build quality. You get the fingerprint sensor on the back, great cameras. You still maintain the headphone jack, the S Pen, which is so cool, as well as the micro SD card slot. I mean, there's so much capability behind this phone, and you can pick these things up for less than $300 pretty much everywhere where I was able to see. And even if this thing was over $400, I mean, it's still a very good performing phone. And for what you're getting, it's extremely cool. Now, the only downside of this phone, maybe as at this point, would probably be the fact that it's on its last version of Android as far as we know. Now, things could change. Maybe Samsung should go and, you know, increase their life cycle support that would be extremely advantageous for them i don't know why they haven't done it yet they should they're just being weirdos about it but that's really the only downside i can think of pretty much for everything else it's a pr it's a very good performing phone and i'm sure if you spend the money you're going to be extremely happy with it for sure so those are my list of basically my favorite budget phones of 2020 again these are used phones these aren't necessarily brand new but if you want to go the brand new route your best bet is going for the samsung galaxy a series even some budget oneplus phones out there 
the OnePlus Nord or whatever it's called should be coming out as well soon. So I guess we'll see what happens there. But these phones are very good in my opinion. And I liked every single one of these whenever I used them. So that's really pretty much it. All these phones, like I said before, will be linked down below. So you can go and get them from there and help support the channel at the same time. But that's really pretty much it. If you guys have any other questions or anything, let me know in the comment section as well. Hit the like button, that would mean so much. But definitely hit that subscribe button. Every single subscriber that we get really does count. So it means so much if you guys can hit that. Also check out the other links down in the description as well. My Twitter, my Instagram, my second channel. More importantly than everything else, I love every single one of you guys. Hopefully I'll catch you guys in the next video. Peace out to them.